What? Don't go off to work in a mood, Ned, please. You've only been back five minutes. I've only been away five minutes, Jan. Look what I come back to last night. I'm sorry. <sighs> How much did you know? Everything. So you knew that Biff could have had this flaming, terrible disease? And you knew how Linda were pregnant and all? Why didn't you tell me? I didn't want to worry you. I'm the head of this family. I don't want things going on behind my back. Well, maybe I thought you did enough for us without taking any more on your shoulders. Or maybe you just like being in the middle of all the drama, eh? You better get off. Can't be late on your first day working for Kim, can you? Oh, and be careful, Jan. She likes being the centre of attention even more than you do. Oh, I'm sorry, love. I really am very, very sorry. You forgot to take your sarnies. Sorry, I'm just not thinking about food. I'll probably start getting pheasant now Mum's working for Kim. Well, then I won't eat at all. I couldn't care less if I never ate again, I'm that happy. Aren't you? I don't know. Biff, you've just tested negative for Huntington's. That means you're OK. And so's our baby. Yeah, I know I should feel happy. But I don't. It's just not sunk in, that's all. Aye. Unless it's something else. Such as? The things that Roy said yesterday about you and Cathy. You what? Biff! Just get lost, Linda. Biff! <sighs> Thank you. All I'm saying is we need to know what Kelly's plans are. Is she staying or what? Well, she's not going back to Tom, is she? Not after what that pervert's done to her. Fine. With a bit of luck, she's learned her lesson. To coin a phrase. Mm. Hello, darling. We got any cornflakes? Yeah. You ate right just there. Ta, Dad. You're the best. Mm. Kelly! Hello, Betty. Well, I hardly recognised you, all fresh faced. We don't all go to bed in our makeup. No, no, I thought you was in Stockport with Tom. Well, I'm back without him. So now you've got something to crow about. I'm sorry, Zoe. I'll pay for it. Don't be silly. I'm just glad you're OK. Butch really frightened me last night. Looming up at the window like that. Don't be frightened. But he might be dangerous. No, of course he's not. Go on, we'll be late for work. Can I see you after? <laughs> what do you think? What's up? Nothing. Accident. Look, can you hold the four for me this morning? Yeah, sure. But there weren't any calls in the diary yesterday. Oh, it's not animals I'm going to see. Not the four-legged kind, anyway. Morning, Jan. Sorry I'm a bit late. I didn't know that, did I? No. But I appreciate your honesty. Welcome to the home farm team. Thank you very much. Uh, where do you want me to start? Oh, well, I'm going to get changed out of these. They're a bit sticky. <laughs> And you are definitely late. Oh. Once I've shared, I'd like some breakfast. Bacon and egg. Oh, no. Fresh orange juice, a croissant, warm, and a cafetiere. Um, I'll serve you if you're not sure. Roy! What? Last night. Yeah, what about it? Well, I was really looking forward to telling Linda the good news. Thanks for spoiling it. Look, Biff, I really am happy what I told you at hospital and that, mate, but it don't make no difference what happened between you and Cathy. I saw you, and if you ask me, I think you got off a line. And what exactly did you see? I saw your neck in it. No, you saw one kiss. Oh. Kiss, it's all right then, innit? Yeah, as a matter of fact, it is. Look, my head was all over the place, and I just felt like Cathy was the only person I could speak to. So? So, yes, I did kiss her. But that's... Look, I just felt grateful, all right? I'll have to try that line in a club. Are you night. listening to me? Me and Cathy are just mates, and that's it. OK, get back in your pram. We're just mates, Roy. Fine. Only it's funny, though, isn't it? 
just what our Dave told you about him and Kim. Just mates. You know I'm going to the Glovers this morning, don't you? But I've got things to do. Look, my pots are selling well. We need the money. Charlie can look after Jerry, can't you? No. I'm meeting Monday. Oh, Charlie, come on. Why should I be run by babysitter? Give me a tenner, I'll think about it. <sighs> You're nearly 18. You should be paying us. Why don't you get a job? I haven't found my calling. I definitely know it's not pottery or the army. Tony. Huh? She says she won't work for us unless you pay her. Really? I'd like to know what with. Our savings are sinking faster than the Titanic. And now this. What? From the county court. They've set a date for my assault case. Look at this thing. Hey. Hey. Well, what do you think of my new wheels? There's a sort of me out at last. I'd sooner have Chris Tate's wheels than them. Hey. Ah, look a paint. A bit of attention from my good lady. They're better than new. Maybe not new. Newish. Have you come checking up? You're wasting your time. Checking up? On our yard. We cleared it just like we were told. We don't want no more harassment from you, Tate. Kim's name might be Tate, but her affairs are nothing to do with me. It's dingle harassment I've come about. Don't pretend I'm not here, Butch. I wish you wasn't. Oh, I'm sure, but that's not my problem. You terrifying Sophie and trespassing on private property, that is my problem. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, it's not often you understand what anyone's talking about. I've done now wrong. No, oh, perhaps you haven't. I wasn't there last night. But if I had to choose between Sophie lying and you... Then you would, wouldn't you? Yeah. Even if I'd known her five minutes. Does your head in, doesn't it, Zoe? Loving someone. I'm warning you, Butch. Stay away, or next time I'll call the police. Well, I didn't know you'd want me to wear a uniform. I gave it a lot of thought, Jan, and I think it's for the best. After all, I've known you a lot longer as a person than I have as an employee. Aye, we're almost family. <laughs> well, speaking of family, is it all right for going to see James? I don't mind what you do in your lunch, are, Jan. How's she getting on? She doing all right? Now, Roy, would you ask me that about any other new member of staff? No, what do you want me for, anyway? Are you any good with electrics? Not bad, why? I want you to fit buttons in all the main rooms. Buttons? These. I press them and a bell rings in the kitchen. Eh? Well, unless you can think of a better way for me to call your mother when I need her. Mrs Gaines. <laughs> What do you want? Sorry, love, I didn't mean to frighten you. I just... Uh... Can I pay for this? Well, why don't you take it out of the damages that we're paying you? Well, that's what I've come about, the court case. Well, I don't think you're allowed to do that, are you? It's intimidation or something. No, no. I want to drop it. Well, I have dropped it. What? Yeah, I've been thinking about it. Putting myself in your old man's shoes, like... Uh, if your daughter were mine and my dean were yours, he deserved a thick ear. Yes, at the very least. I... Well, I'm glad you've decided to be fair about it. I'm not grateful, but... No, no, no. Don't expect you to be grateful. I went wrong. Yes, I thought so. So? Can we call it quits? <sighs> That's fine by me. I assume you have spoken to my husband about this. No. He went at home. I thought you could tell him. Well, I think he'd rather hear it from you. Oh, what's it matter? Look, I'll tell you what. Take this for the pot. I gotta go. See ya. What the hell's that? A bell push. So that I can call Jan whenever I need her. <laughs> Wouldn't it be easier to keep her on the lead? Wrong pedigree. What do you want? I was wondering whether any prospective purchasers have come forward. 
For the holiday village, you mean? Unless you're selling the family silver as well. Oh. Nobody's serious. I wouldn't worry about it if I were you. I oh, know, you wouldn't. For some reason, my bells are ringing. No, you wasn't! Old! Oh. See what I mean, Mandy? Can't he come home? He's not right in the head. When was it? I think Lisa means that Butch is missing your stabilising influence. That's right. He needs stabilising. So I'll get some stables. But I'm not coming home until that house is declared a mumps free zone. What's up with you? Get him out of ten in there. No, there's more to life than money, you know. Oh, will you get over yourself? Sophie isn't interested. And how would you know when a bird's interested? Cos I have had more than you. Yeah, not since I've known you, you've not. Look, the Tates run this village. And Sophie works for them. So? So? She's scared of them. And all I've got to do is show her that I'm not. And she will come running. Oh, I say. <laughs> oh, don't she look lovely in a little <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Hey, you make a proper picture, you two. <laughs> Proud grandpa and his little granddaughter. Oh, it's a pleasure I've never had. You must be very proud. <laughs> Sorry. Proud? Uh, yes, we are. <laughs> Look, um, would you excuse me? Ah. Of all the jobs I imagined you doing after you left the force, Terry, I must say, running a creche wasn't one of them. Things change, Brooke, except the standard of your jokes. I'm sure you know I'm not here to be witty. Why are you here? The deal was that we'd never see each other again. But you haven't kept your end of the bargain. You've been careless, Tony, and we can't have that, can we? You better come in. was stupid. Assaulting a teenage boy? Possibly drawing newspaper attention? I think that's a bit worse than stupid. It was a natural reaction. You spent 20 years keeping a grip on your natural reactions, Tony. Why this? Because the little animal tried to sexually assault my daughter. And you've spent many nights drinking with men you knew to be murderers. A long time ago. Perhaps I'm just tired of never giving myself away. A luxury you'll never be able to afford. If you care about your family's safety, you won't risk the anonymity we've all worked so hard to provide. You're right. As it happens, our friend Adlington didn't prove too much problem. Oh? We spoke to him. Thanks. But it can't happen twice. Not unless you want the upheaval of moving again. No. We want to stay here. Apart from anything else, our new house has just about broken the bank. Aren't you working? Don't know what to do. Do what everybody else does when they leave the service. Tell a few oil sheiks where to put their burger alarms. Charge a grand a day. I don't want the past. Any of it. Just a suggestion. OK, bye-bye, Mrs Thorpe. What's the matter with her? Um, nothing, except her name's Mrs. Palmer. Look, are you OK? No. So, who broke your window? What happened? Butch Dingle's been pestering Sophie. I was out on call last night and he jumped up outside the kitchen window and Sophie threw something. Well, I'd call that stalking, not pestering. Yes, yeah, so would I. But I'm trying not to overreact. Zoe, you can't overreact with a dingle. They're really not that sensitive. 
It seems you dropped some money at Addington's. He asked me to return it. Don't. I suspected this. Adlington came to tell me he was dropping all the charges. Told me some cock and bull story about how he'd suddenly discovered his morals. Honestly, I had no idea the unit had got wind of it. They always get wind of everything, Tony. It doesn't matter where we go, does it? We'll always just be pretending to be normal. Because of your past. You knew who you were marrying, Beck. That's not quite true, actually. But I've damned well learned since. Then we come to proposal three, the sale of the holiday village. Oh, I don't think we've got a problem there. King, would it be OK if I went and said goodnight to James before I go? Uh, sure. I was going up myself. Don't tell me Kim's tucking her son up in his cot. Isn't that natural? Kim's about as natural as Pamela Anderson's chest. Uh, keeping secrets? Nope. You just don't like bad manners. I suppose you've been discussing the future of the holiday village. If that's how you want to play it, fine. Let me give you a piece of advice. Don't let Kim talk you into this ridiculous scheme of selling the holiday village as an open prison. No one talks me into anything, Chris. Good. Because if that happens, I'll go public. It'll be dead in ten minutes. <sighs> no, love. Look. That's a 10p. It's not a five. See you know what I mean? It's all there. <laughs> I tell her to get new glasses. No, Charlie, the customer is always right, even if she does only spend 27p. <laughs> now, what can I do for you? Actually, I was um, wondering if you had a job. A job? Mm. I'm under pressure. Oh. This village is about as much fun as acne. What, the place of the skin condition? <laughs> five. Well, you see, the thing is, if I did have a job going, my Kelly, she'd get first shout. Oh. Kelly has got her exams to retake. Do what? Your exams. You think I'm going back to that school? <laughs> get real. <laughs> Hi. Hello, you're early. Don't tell me Kim wanted to look after her own baby. <laughs> well, she's always cared about him. It's uh, changing nappies she's not fond of. Well, it's nice to have an extra hour with you. Oh, um, do you fancy vegging out in front of the telly tonight? Sounds perfect. As long as your friend doesn't pop up at the window. He won't. What you said this morning was right. He's just a harmless idiot. trying to eat. But it's still daylight. Hello. I'm sorry, I'm seeing someone else. Aren't I? Well, I don't want to spoil the moment, but I think there's something you should know. Yes? Chris is going to do his best to block the prison scheme. Really? Well, you can mock, but it could make things very awkward if he goes public. It was always going to go public. Yeah, but not with a member of the board. I thought maybe we should hire a good PR company. Steve, I've been dealing with that worm on wheels for years. He's the least of our problems. Fine. Leaves me free to concentrate on other things. <laughs> I'm glad to see you care so much about public relations. So you won't mind going home to your lonely little cottage? Oh, come on. I'm still a chaste and grieving widow. You know we don't have to carry on with this. What? I don't mean I don't want to. I mean, it's not easy being the resident freaks in a village like Emmerdale. How can caring about someone make you a freak? Everybody needs someone special, someone to love. Yeah, as much as they love gossiping. Good! Let them! <laughs> Where are you going? I'm going to get our jackets because I fancy a drink in the ball pack. <laughs> 
one white wine. There he is. Mm. Looks all right to me. Look, I've been broke more times than my Uncle Zach's nose. I haven't. Yeah, well, you're posh. I'm not. Well, you're all right. <laughs> I've been looking for a job all day today. Have you tried the post office? They're over there. Go and ask them. Mm, maybe the GPO is a bit beneath me. <laughs> what? <laughs> I didn't realise being so desperate made you so choosy. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I know you're happy to have Kelly back, but if she doesn't get some proper qualification... Viv, will you give it a rest? Where is she going to end up? I don't know. In some dead-end job with a baby on her arm, that's where. What makes you so sure? She's got a lot of go in her as Kelly. She's my daughter, not yours. Watch his pie, it's going flat as a pancake. Mm. Well done. Come on, International Rescue. He said he wasn't coming to the pub, love. I know, but I told him I were buying. When have you ever known him resist that? <sighs> when has any man been able to resist that? Honest, Zach, I think it's serious. I think he's in love. So he reckons. Nah, it's not proper. Oi, do you reckon we should have a party? What? Celebrate Biff and Linda's good news. I don't know. Neither do I, that's what I'm asking you for. You know me, I'm always up for a few jars. Biff's more than a son in law to me, Roy. I'm just that glad he ain't got that illness. And that's worth a party in anybody's book. Yeah. That we're just talking about celebrating your news. What do you reckon? I think you deserve a party. I just want to pretend that none of this has ever happened, Roy. I bet you do. Biff! What? Are you going somewhere nice? No, I'm going for a walk. On your own? No, to go and see my mistress. I never meant what I said this morning. Oh, I won't worry about it. I got the same off right half an hour later. I don't care what Roy thinks. Yeah, well, you did earlier on. No, I, I was just emotional. I've been thinking about you all day. And you've never done anything to hurt me. Not once. I'm so sorry, Biff. Will you ever forgive me? Do you want to go for a walk, then? Again. What? Took my girlfriend to the hornet's nest. Was it that bad? No. You were there. <laughs> oh, Horlicks or Scotch on the rocks? Well, seeing as you've ruined my innocence, make it Scotch. 